Hey, Grumpa here, sad kick or a sidekick to the blonde with the wand, the transition magician, Coach Annie, the dark mistress hostess of life outside the box. Actually, she's not a dark mistress. She's a very positive, upbeat person. For the what, most part. For the most part. And we, we need to really work on that because, folks, this is about our fifth attempt to record this segment as we've been <laughs> screwing up repeatedly. So um, good thing this one's not live because it would have been awfully embarrassing. It, well, what was, the, what was the phrase that you said about radio? Yes, you can end your radio career in about five words if you... And, and no, we didn't say any of the seven words that George... Carlin, was he the one that said the Yes, seven, the seven words, words you can't words. say on radio or TV. Yeah. yeah. No, it was nothing like Would that. You like it was to know just them? it was just a <laughs> it was just a comedy <laughs> of errors. And um, you can tell me the seven words during our next break, honey are, bunches. Are, are you interested? I am always interested in everything you have to say because you are the bright light, the mistress of light of life outside the box here on WRLR FM. Wow, I'm I'm I am honored that you would say that. Yes, yes, you are. So we have another thought that we want to talk about. A third thought. Wait, let me clear the first two. There's not much room upstairs. That, ah, there they go. Okay, it's all clear? Good. Okay, are you ready? This I'm is ready. another work one. Okay. I am focused, organized, and easily able to honor the priorities that need my attention. How do you feel about that? Okay, focused and what was the other? It was focused, organized, and easily able to honor the priorities that need my attention. So focused, <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> the second one. Organized. Focused, organized, and able to honor commitments. Is that, that's it? It's the idea. Okay, focused, organized. So, all right. So, and that is again, another one primarily for the work context. Right, right. It's it's all about the your priorities. And actually, it can be the personal context, too, the priorities that you have in your life. Okay. Like health. Are you, you know, are you organized in, in what you do to... <laughs> well, focus is an interesting word because it almost takes us back to the thought we had on completion which is, although you need to complete projects and tie up the loose ends, you need to enjoy the journey. And you're not enjoying the journey, and in fact, you're not being effective at the task unless you are focused. For the most part. Don't you, aren't you a multitasker? Isn't, is, is multitasking bad? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, first of all, it's a myth, because you technically don't concentrate on two things at one time. You, you rapidly alternate between the two. Your brain shifts back and forth. Isn't that quickly. interesting? Because we all think that we can do it. We, can all, we, we think that we can watch TV and we can do the laundry. And if they're tasks that require minimal attention, you might get away with that. We all know well, what... Well, of course, because cause like the watching, the, watching TV and doing the laundry... Yeah, you can, you're basically, no pun intended, tuning out the TV in reality when you're trying to figure out if this is a white or a colored load and do you need bleach and what temperature. Well, and the minute you walk away from the washer and you go back to the TV, you're not doing the laundry, the machine is. Well, what if the TV's in your laundry room? I mean, we, we modern Americans now have a TV in every room, including the bathroom in well, many houses. Not we in don't. our house. Not in our house, but many houses do, don't they? I'm or, not sure how many people have a TV in their laundry room. Or we're taking our smartphone or tablets into the bathroom with us, aren't we? I'm not admitting now to that. Now, there is the ultimate multitask. I am not admitted to that. <laughs> there is the ultimate multitask. Or the best one is when you, and we see this at football games all the time, where you see the guy standing at, in the bathroom taking care of business. Now, there's something above the taking care of business station you can read, and he's also holding his beer in the other hand. Which now that that takes power of focus and concentration. Well, and that's so funny because how the heck can you go to the bathroom with a beer in your hand? It's he's a master of multitasker. The master multitasker. But it it's it 
can lead to bad results. I mean, we all know yeah, what... Yeah, like the flush at the end when you when you talk to someone when you're on the phone. And your smartphone went down the toilet with it. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that's... Yes, smartphones don't swim too well. No, and people you might found just that out, get... You found that out with a pool, not a toilet. But. Not a toilet, no. And people might just get a little irritated knowing... What you were doing yes. while you were conversing with them. Yes. You, you, there's nothing quite so pleasant as having a, having a phone call with someone and then you hear a flush on the other end of the line. <laughs> you don't know if it's a comment on your conversation or whether they were multitasking and not paying attention to what you were saying. Would or... you say that that's focus and organization? Wow. I'd say it's talent. Uh, I think it's pretty talented. But, but some areas, you know, we all know that texting and driving is not terribly effective form of multitasking. No. In fact, I don't know how many people I've known that have gotten in accidents while they were texting. Yes. It's not, not, tends to not be a terribly effective form. So, so focus organization is the second part of your, your quote. And may I also challenge a bit on that? Absolutely. Because they bring it on baby, bring it on. Cause there are studies that show that, you know, the pristine desk is not necessarily the sign of the effective worker. And how many people know of the mad scientist, you know, that has the messy laboratory but is brilliant? Or um, the, the writer that has notes, post-it notes, stuck all over his, his wall? Or, um, you know, there's just the junk pile somewhere sitting somewhere. And I've read studies, again, one of the things we like and enjoy is social science research where they do double blind studies and so forth Ner about nerd alert nerd alert nerd alert nerd alert um, and these studies have kind of borne out the fact that that absolute pristine cleanliness and organization doesn't necessarily lead to the most effective path sometimes you can spend too much time organizing and not enough time working it's it's true but are you just trying to defend your office well, I do. The, the best way to deal with that is to simply close the door so you don't look at it when you walk by. That's what I've and been doing with mine. <laughs> that's true, Missy, about your office. We don't want to see the, the nice thing about radio is it's a theater of the mind. So picture, if you will, listeners, what the transition magician's own office might look like. And Especially now during tax season. Yes, and now you know why she, she tends to shy away season. from Skype calls. <laughs> it's, a, it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's, it's, it's not because she doesn't want you to see her. She just doesn't want you to see what, what lurks in her office behind her, what lurks in the hearts of men. And, and we're, we're being a little silly. but Of course. Um, but, but so focus but and organize. <laughs> but now back to my office. Um, but focus and organization leads you to what was the third part of your, uh, to honor your commitments, essentially. Your priorities that your, need your attention. Honor your priorities. Yeah. Well, and okay, so I see that because organization is a good thing when it comes to priorities. Now, I was one back in the days when I had the law practice. And you for the listeners. You were supremely organized. You were on top of everything. But I didn't spend hours and hours organizing my day. Um, and again, for the listeners who don't know, I spent um, about 25 years in private practice as a lawyer, retired a little while back, so no longer giving or dispensing any legal advice. But and the, the amazing thing about you was that you could pick up the phone and talk with someone while you were working on a project, hang up the phone from that conversation, and be right back where you were you were right focused back to the work that you were doing prior the, to the call and I always found that absolutely amazing and I don't know how you pulled it off well well thank you although the, it the, the the call would interrupt it wouldn't I wouldn't work on the project while I was on the call just to no, clarify no, no but that's what I meant you you would have the conversation and then you'd go back True. to what you were working on and I always found that just incredibly fascinating because most of the people that I know, including myself, if I'm interrupted when I'm working on a project, I have to, after I have the conversation or, or, or whatever, I have to go back, refocus. I don't just jump back into what I was doing. 
Um, and it just, either you appeared that you were just able to jump back in and start, or you are truly gifted in that arena. Maybe I just fooled everyone. Did but. you fool everyone or was it, so what was your secret? Well, as far as jumping back in and, and learning yeah, to process. Yeah, because it looked like you were just like, bam, okay, I hung up the phone, I'm back into the file, I'm doing it. The only thing How'd I can think it? of is that I, I rarely multitask and when I do, I'm abysmal at it. And I think what I've learned to do is just go, okay, focus on this, give my absolute attention. So if I picked up the phone to speak with a client, for example, they get my 100% undivided attention for the duration of that call, and then I could switch back to what I was doing before rather than trying to flip-flop back and forth. Because in addition to the toilet flush while you're on a conversation with someone, the other thing that's incredibly annoying is Unless somebody's doing intake for you, hearing the clickety-clack of a keyboard in the background as you're trying to have a conversation, because you know they're doing something else. Well, and when I was in, in financial services slash customer service, they would hear the clickety-clack. Because you were doing intake. Because I was, I was right. doing intake and documenting. Right. Um, and that's expected. It's expected. But, but if it was just a conversation that you were having, the clickety-clack would annoy so we're in agreement that focused organization and um, lack of multitasking make you better able to handle your priorities. I would say yes. Okay. I'm well, the next segment, yes. we're going to be talking about the shining stars in your life. Mm, sounds cool and interesting. And we'll be back in a few, folks with Life Outside the Box on WRLR-FM after this short break. Stay tuned. Well, I'm told, I'm told, I'm told, I'm told, I'm told, I'm told, 